Welcome. It's the Jenkins Platform Special Interest Group. It's the 25th of February, 2022. Uh, topics for today include open action items, uh, require Java at 11 or newer for Jenkins Core, Linux operating system support policy, the switch from system five init to system D in Jenkins Linux, Linux packaging, and we won't cover exit lifecycle change. We need to carry that one forward. Need some discussion with Basel and with Tim Jacom before we have more to talk about. Any other topics that need to be on today's agenda? Um, not that I know. All right, then let's go ahead. So I still have one open action item, plugin installation manager docs. We have a pull request that we closed that was deep and covering, but filled with a number of mistakes. Um, the action item we decided in docs office hours was we'll describe a simple use case on Jenkins on www.jenkins.io and the more detailed cases in the plugin installation manager tool repository. Still open there, that will need some work. Java 11 or newer requirement for Jenkins core. Uh, the Jenkins enhancement proposal has been merged. Uh, it does not yet have a timeline. So the, the timeline, in order to determine it, we've got help from Basil Crow. He'll be doing some more detailed checks and looking for problems or issues that might be, um, might be getting in our way. Tim Jacome asked if we could uh, fit that into a, an upcoming weekly very soon with the intent that we would release it in June. And I've asked for an additional two weeks to do deeper evaluation. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're tracking the details in this JIRA EPIC. The JIRA EPIC right now has five items in it. One of those items, Jesse Glick specifically expressed his worry about that it could be a blocker for people upgrading to, to, to use Java 11 on their controller. Uh, others, I'm less concerned about. There's work that must be done, but he's worried that this one is a real blocker as a bug. So the, the one you're pointing at? Correct, yes, this 59910. This one, is he's worried that this looks very serious and oh. we haven't done enough, nearly enough investigation yet to understand is it a real problem or not. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we've got still a number of candidate issues that need to be reviewed. Uh, here you see a list of 37 that are, are good candidates that need to be assessed. Some of them are specific to plugins, et cetera. So they're not all, yes, we must fix them, but there are some that, that, have, that need to be looked at. And that's, then there's some old ones in this epic that we had, where this epic mostly contains things that are resolved because it was used oh. for two years ago when we did Java 11 but there are still some that aren't resolved here that may need to be considered, need thought. Any questions there on the Java 11 or newer approach? No. Okay. Let's work ahead. And there is a lot of work ahead on that one, absolutely. Next was a Linux operating system support policy. We have had for a year or more a Windows support policy because we needed a way to express which Windows versions we were testing and which we were not. Um, this Linux support policy started with that idea and then Basel stepped in and said, hey, you know what? We should describe this more accurately based on what we actually test. He has since added many, many tests of the installers from many different Linux operating systems. And so there is still work to be done on this pull request in terms of assuring that people agree with it. But for me, I think it's very close to describing what it should. We've got uh, three levels of support. We support a platform if we run automated tests on it. We put it at level two, patches considered if we don't run automated tests on it. And unsupported is if the vendor does not support it, we refuse to support it as well. Okay, makes sense. Mm -hmm. Then the next hot topic is switching Linux packages from system five in it to system D. So this is a change to the internals of the Linux installers, RPM, DEB, RPM for both SUSE and for, for Red Hat. 
And uh, it's been proposed to include in Jenkins 2.332.1 LTS, March 9. Uh, discussion is happening in the mailing list now. And, and we'll see if we don't choose to include this, then we have a little bit of work we need to do in the packaging repository to get it back to behave like it did in 2.319.3. Probably trying to smash an open door. Uh, the upgrade part, so people that have an existing installation using the old uh -huh. methods or have uh, rests of that, if they apply the new installer, or, or I don't know how to express it, but they take a newer generation of the installer, it will not break. That's correct. So what, what Basel did is he created an upgrade path that takes their existing settings and brings them into system D. And it now makes it actually quite a bit easier to edit settings. Whereas before I had to have platform specific descriptions of in order to edit settings on Red Hat, I do this. Or in order to set, edit settings on Debian, I do this other thing that's different. Well, Remember now, being there, being there yeah, seen it. <laughs> use a single command, system CTL, edit Jenkins uh, to, to adjust settings. It's really very, very elegant. And system D has some, some capabilities that are just very attractive. No more use of separate scripts to manage the start and stop of Jenkins. System D does it directly. Um, System D will automatically restart if there's a failure. So no need to do special configurations based on your operating system in case of crashes or failures. It, it, it really is an improvement. It, this change fixed like 10 bugs and very nice improvement. I'm looking forward for that. Although I'm yeah. using a lot of Docker, but uh... all right, that's all that I had. Unless there are other topics, I propose we close the session for today. Mm -hmm. Thanks, John Mark.